Welcome to Kids Academy. Welcome to Kids Academy. Hey everybody, I'm Ramiro. I need to prepare a birthday present for my friend, Sea Turtle. A seashell necklace will make a perfect present. Will you help me find and count seashells for the necklace? Great. Say, how many seashells can you see? One, two, three, four, five. That's not enough to make a necklace. See any more seashells? Right, there are six in the sand. How many shells have we got now? Well, let's see. We started with five and added six more. One, two, three, four, five, plus six more makes six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven seashells in all. Let's go have a peek under that stone. Great. There are four seashells here. Let's add them all together. Eleven plus four more makes how many seashells? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we found fifteen seashells so far. Good work. There are five more seashells near those seaweed strips. Now that we found five more, how many seashells have we got in all? Fifteen plus five more makes... 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 seashells in all. That's enough to make a beautiful necklace. Thanks for helping me find and count the seashells. Bye-bye. Today we have a new worksheet. The name of our worksheet is called Guess the Number. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using several different equations, but they're going to help us find a couple of different missing numbers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at our directions. And it says, check the correct rule for each function machine and use it to find the missing number. Check the numbers that is missing. So we're going to start with this. We We've got one column over here says input and one column says output. And what this means is on the input column, that's the number that we start with as if this were a machine and we put in the number eight. Then we have to find the rule, which could be adding a number or subtracting a number. And then that will give us an output number or the end number of our equation. So our first equation is eight something equals seven. So we have to figure out, is it eight plus two equals seven, eight minus two equals seven, or eight minus one equals seven? Well, I see at the end of my equation that there is a seven, which is smaller than the number eight. So that tells me that we're going to have to subtract in this equation. So I know it's not gonna be plus two, but it could be minus two. So if you're not sure, go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. So 8 minus 2 equals 7. Is that the correct answer? Let's check on our fingers really quick. If I have 8 and I take away 1, 2, that gives me 6. So that is not correct. I can see that that's not going to work. So I'm actually going to try the last one, which is minus 1. So I'm going to plug that in. 8 minus 1 equals 7. And that is correct. If you're not sure, you can always draw it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, minus one, okay, equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The answer is seven. So this is the correct answer, negative one, or that's the correct rule. So I'm going to put a check right here because I just checked it to make sure it was correct. Down here, I need to follow that same rule to give me the first number, okay? So the rule is minus one, okay? But I don't know what the first number is. So something minus one equals 14. 
okay? Now this is tricky, I'm not sure what the answer is. Something minus one equals 14. But here, for this, we're gonna use something called an associative property. An associative property is basically telling us that we have a number family. We have three numbers that always go together. And no matter how we mix them up with an addition problem or a subtraction problem, they're always gonna go together. So I know that since this is a subtraction problem, the number that we don't know is the biggest number. So something minus one equals 14. Okay, so I know the number one, I know the number 14, but I don't know the last number. So actually what I need to do is I need to change this problem around or make it in a different way. And this time I wanna make the number that I don't know on the end. So I'm actually gonna turn this into an addition problem. So one plus 14, those are the two numbers that I do know equals my mysterious number. And if you add these up, 14, 15 is going to be the answer here. Okay. So let's see if we can find that over on our little robots here. I've got 15, 12, and 13. And we just figured out using the associative property that 15 is the correct answer here. So I'm gonna actually just put a check right here. I don't need to actually write it in, okay? So let's go on to the next one, okay? And we're gonna follow the rules again. So I've got two and then something, whatever the rule is, equals 12. And whatever this something is should make sense in each one of these different equations. And I'm just gonna do the first one here two and then something equals 12. So I know since 12 is bigger that I'm gonna need to add here. So it's not gonna be a minus. Um, so it's either plus eight or plus 10. Two plus eight equals 12 or two plus 10 equals 12. Well, this one should be pretty easy if you think about it. It's gonna be plus 10. 2 plus 10 equals 12. And if you couldn't just figure that out in your head, you can always write it out. 10, 11, 12. So 10 plus 2 equals 12. Okay? That should work in our next problem here too, that plus 10. So let's just go ahead and make sure that works. So 8 plus 10 equals, and our output on the next one is 18, right? So let's try, let's have 10 and then add 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And what does that equal? 10 plus 8 is 18. So we know that plus 10 is our rule here. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put a check. So I know now for the next one that something plus 10, okay, equals 20, all right? But I have to change it around using the associative property to make this so that that mysterious number is on the end. So this time, I'm gonna have this number over here, and I, now I'm gonna turn it into a subtraction problem. So can I take 10 minus 20? No, I can't because 20 is the bigger number. So I'm gonna start with 20 first, and I'm gonna take 20 minus 10 equals what? And I'm gonna draw these out in columns. So I've got one column and two columns for 20. And then I'm gonna subtract 10, which leaves me with how much? It leaves me with 10, right? So I know that the answer is 10 on that one. I'm gonna put a check right over here, okay? Now let's go on to the last one. The last one in our number machine, we start with, or the input is 12. We need to do something for it to equal the output, which is eight. So I think I'm gonna have to subtract since 12 is the bigger number here. So I can either subtract four or subtract three. What do you think? Let's try four and see if that works. So 12 minus four equals eight. Well, let's draw it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now let's subtract eight. One, I'm sorry, four, two, 
three, four. Does that give us eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It does, so I know that minus four is going to be my rule, but let's double check. Let's look down here and check if it works in that one too, because if it's a rule, it'll work every time. So we'll do 10 minus four should equal six, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, minus four, one, two, three, four, gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, that's correct. So minus four is our rule. So now I know that 14 is the number that I start with because that's the input. Now I'm gonna subtract four, which is my rule, and then I need to find the answer. And I can actually just find the answer. I don't have to turn this into anything different or use a different um, associative property to find this answer because my unknown number is at the end. So I'm just gonna take 14 minus four. So I'm gonna have a column of 10, 10 one tens, and then one, two, three, four units of one, minus four units, one, two, three, four, and that leaves me with 10, right? That should be my answer. Do I see it down here? I do. My first robot right here is 10, so that's the correct answer. So that's how we solved for our missing number today, using the different equations and the rule to help us find that missing number. And we used the associative property today to help us come up with some of these answers. So great job today. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye. Hello, boys and girls. It's Teacher Mike here. And today we're going to be looking at a worksheet called Part, Part, whole. In this worksheet, we're going to get two numbers. We're going to get a number that represents the whole and one of the parts. It's going to be our job to figure out what's that other part. And I'm going to show you a strategy how to do it. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say, for example, we had the number 7 as our whole number. And we had the other part of 3. It's our job to figure out what goes in that other part. Well, we have two choices. We could add or subtract to figure out what goes in the blank box. Well, if we added these two numbers together, seven plus three, we're going to get 10. And 10 is bigger than seven. But we said seven is the whole. So the answer can't be 10. So adding isn't correct. We must have to subtract. So if we take our whole and we take away one of the parts, we'll be left with the other part. Here, let's take a look. If we subtract seven minus three, again, we're taking away that first part, so we'll only be left with that other part, we would get the answer of four. Seven minus three equals four. That must mean the other part is really four. To check our work, we can add the two parts together and see if it equals the whole. Let's check it out. If we added three plus four, we do in fact get seven. So this is a good strategy. Let's read the directions for our worksheet and get started right away. Part, part, whole. What numbers are missing from each puzzle? Trace on the dotted line from each correct number. And we have the example right here of five, five, and 10. And that's true because five plus five is 10. So let's take a look at our first example. We have six and two and six is our whole number. Okay, so I remember we said we were gonna use subtraction to figure out what the missing part is. So let's subtract six minus two. And when we subtract six minus two, we get four. And I see four is our first answer choice. But to confirm this is our answer, or to check this is our answer, let's add four plus two. And when I add four plus two, I do in fact get six. So let's go ahead and trace our way to the four. Now let's look at the other part of that question or the other side. We have an eight and a three and the eight is the whole number. So if we have an eight and a three, what's the other part? Well, again, let's use subtraction. Eight minus three equals five. So I think that the other part is five. Well, let's add our two parts together and see if it equals the whole just to be sure. Five 
plus 3 does in fact equal 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. 5 plus 3 equals 8. So we can trace on the dotted line to the 5. Let's look at our next two examples. We have a 12 as our whole number, and a 6 is one of the parts. Remember, we can use subtraction. So let's subtract 6 from 12. And 6 and 12 minus 6 is 6. And again, to check our work, we can add 6 plus 6, and that is in fact 12. So we can go ahead and trace on the dotted line to 6. Let's check out the next example. We have 10 as our whole number and 8 as one of the parts. We will use subtraction to figure out what the missing part is. So let's subtract 8 from 10. When you take away 8 from 10, you're left with 2. We'll check our work by adding 2 plus 8. And of course, that gives us 10. So we can go ahead and trace on the dotted line from 10 to 2. Let's look at the next examples. We have 14 as our whole number and 8 as one of the parts. Let's use subtraction to find the missing part. 14 minus 8 is a little bit more tricky of a subtraction problem. So let's count backwards. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So I think the missing number is 6. Let's add that part of 6 plus the other part of 8, and that does give us 14. So we know the missing part is a 6. Let's trace on the dotted line to 6. Our other example has 11 as a whole number and 7 as the first part. So let's subtract 7 from 11. 11 minus 7. That equals 4. We'll check our work with addition, adding our two parts together, the missing part of 4 plus 7, and that it does, and that does equal 11. Let's trace on the dotted line to 4, because that is our missing part. Let's check out our last two examples. We have 16 as our whole number and 5 as our first part. To figure out what the missing part is, we'll subtract the whole number of 16 minus the first part of 5. Again, this is a tricky subtraction problem, so let's count backwards. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Wow. We counted all the way up to 11. So I think 11 is our missing number. Now let's add 11 plus 5. And that in fact does equal 16. So we know that our missing number is 11. Our last number. We have 18 as our whole number and 9 as one of our parts. We'll use subtraction one final time to figure out what the missing part is. So we're taking our whole number. And we're taking the one part that we know away from it. We're subtracting what we know. So we'll be left with the missing part. And 18 minus 9 is a doubles fact. That equals 9. And when we add 9 plus 9, I know that that does equal 18. So our missing number is 9. Remember, boys and girls, when you have a part, part, whole problem, if you have the whole number and one of the parts, you can use subtraction to figure out the correct answer. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new videos. Find links to our apps in the comments below.